G'day fellas and welcome to a casted game. Spawning in on the south side of the map, we have got Leenok who is playing as the Mongols. Starting off with a uh starting off with an Uber, placing his town center down on a wood line. Doesn't look like he's got a gold mine in sight, unfortunately. There is one down towards this position, so curiously he hasn't placed his town center down here. Has instead opted for a, a little bit closer of a spawn to where he started. But uh, over on the other side of the map, of course, we've got the one, the only. It is the Viper. And he's going to be playing the Holy Roman Empire for us today. Uh, this civilization on Hillendale, one of the strongest civilizations that there is. So I'm looking forward to seeing what he brings to the table with regard to this game. Uh, so going to be opening up with a prelate, opening up with a lumber camp as well. So not looking to go into the gold super early. Typically, we do see the 3-3 three, three build order, uh, which is where you've got the three villages on gold, the three villages on food, uh, and then you add every other villager uh, through to food. But... Uh, Interestingly, we actually see Viper being very, very smart already, and such a great move from this. So, I don't know about you guys, but okay, just to explain what what is happening here, he's picking up the wolves. Now, you don't normally pick up the wolves with your scout unless you're playing against the Rus, but in this situation, he's actually going and picking up these scout or these uh, wolves because he's very cognizant that he may be under potential threat or already. Look at this, uh, uh, very unfortunate timing. Uh, so. He is going to be looking to capture those relics. His prelates are going to be attacked by that. Now Viper heading out towards this western flank. He spots... He, he goes to put down some walls down. Lee Nock subsequently spots that out. So very big oof coming in right there. Viper looking to wall himself in completely at this point. This is very curious. I don't think we've ever really seen something like this come out before where people have been on the defensive walling themselves in this early. Obviously, we've seen it on the offensive uh, plenty of times. But yeah, when it comes to the defensive, a little bit different of a situation. Uh, all of those wolves going down to the town center. So it's going to be able to clear that out. And now we just see Lee Nock over here camping out on this uh, on this village. We'll see how it goes and whether he looks to block in the walls. Looks like that's exactly what he's going to be doing. So doesn't look like he's going to be getting any uh, walls up today. Uh, except for the fact that we've now got ourselves a little bit of a scout coming in to issue an, a, uh, a move on order. Uh, in Australia, police have got the power to, to force you to move on. And it uh, looks like the scout is uh, is indeed carrying the carrying the red and the blue, uh, but uh, forces that Khan to go away. But keep in mind, behind this, uh, not only have we had the Khan out and about, we've also had the scout uh, from Lee Nock. He has opted towards that uh, angle and also going to be heading towards the early aggression with the Uvu. Uh, Barrack's going to be on that bad boy and uh, looking to get out some early spears. So I would say when it comes to this matchup, uh, typically you would expect that it's Mongols' favorite. Or favored, rather. Uh, but when it comes to this map, it kind of puts it back in the favor of the Holy Roman Empire player, I would typically say. Uh, so that is something to be aware of that I, I feel like Lee Nock is definitely and quite literally going to be uh, playing an uphill battle here. So we'll have to see how he goes. Now, keep in mind, these guys are very high ranked at the moment. Uh, they're not only going to be playing in N4C. Uh, this is a, a show match that's happening right now, I believe. Uh, that is being hosted up. But N4C is right around the corner. Uh, if you guys are watching this video on YouTube, highly likely that N4C is underway. Uh, I'll leave a link in the description to where you can find out more about N4C uh, because that is the largest Age of Empires 4 tournament to date uh, that is going to be taking place. But uh, already we begin to see Lee Nock now applying some pressure towards this front palisade wall. Uh, I suspect that we're probably just going to have a villager repairing it up for the interim here. So essentially Viper looking at, uh, at one idle villager. Going to be focusing down the Palisade Gate now. Now, keep in mind, he's going to have uh, continual forces moving out here. You can see the spears were trying to come around over on the left flank. Looks like Viper has walled himself in on the right flank. So we are seeing, we are witnessing right now, Viper go for the complete turtle play. Viper is literally, he, he looked up the uh, what, what it is to turtle. He, he searched up his favorite species of turtle and he said, I want to become a turtle. And he is now looking to do that. Placing down the Arkham Chapel. Bit of a curious position here. Doesn't have access to the wood lines. Uh, I think as the Holy Roman Empire, ideally you want to be uh, sorting out your wood lines. But obviously Viper here recognizes that this is going to be the gold mine. It's going to be the berries. It's going to be the deer as well. So essentially you've got three patches of resources in here. So no surprises that he does look to go for that. Now it looks like the villager going to be coming out, going to be locking the gate. Uh, I like that the gate is locked. Um, I don't know why you, you have the ability to, to lock a gate because you can't actually move through enemy gates in this game. Uh, but... I like that he's gone to the extent of locking the gate. So very smart there from Viper. 
And now, in addition to uh, those spears, we also see a villager getting in on the mix. Uh, and uh, slowly but steadily, he's working through that uh, that gate or through that uh, that wall. Second villager now going to be coming out as well. We see Viper actually opening the gate and then closing the gate. <laughs> Viper says, come on in, John. The gate is open. <laughs> Viper now going to be able to sneak out a, a scout, go out over to the east side of the map. And uh, we continue to see more and more spears coming out here. Now, Viper almost up to the next age behind this. He manages to get... Did he just go out and grab a sheep and then came back in? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Viper. Oh, Viper. You always amaze me. Uh, so he is looking to get up with the Arkham Chapel, um, but I suspect we're probably just going to be see him going straight into um, an archery range here just to try and defend this. Uh, but already, I, I would say, like, from, from this point on, Lee Nock already fighting. You know, he, he's obviously, we mentioned earlier, it's an uphill battle, figuratively, literally. Uh, but I definitely feel like, you know, this has been a fail uh, with regard to this start. But I guess one thing to note is with Viper healing or repairing this wall, it is using up his wood income nonstop. So he's not actually able to get down a, a uh, an archery range immediately upon aging. Uh, and it means that he's going to need to allocate more villagers over to wood if he wants to get that out. You can see that he's actually going to be losing uh, this Palisade Gate. And keep in mind, there is a villager in here as well. So he's going to be up against a villager. He's going to be up against, you know, a, a potential... Um, a, 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 uh, an outpost that goes down on these resources. And in addition to that, uh, he is also going to be, you know up against a huge mass of spears that is already out on the map. Uh, we can now see Viper coming down with a, a, um, a an outpost. He cancels it. He said it's a little bit too defensive. I'm going to move it back a bit. Now, keep in mind, it's being covered by the town center if he wants to come in here. The spear is going to be moving in, though, towards those villagers, looking to try and make some, uh, some ends meet. Uh, don't manage to kill any villagers, but he forces him off the outpost. And you see that second outpost coming back here. Now, keep in mind, behind this Yam network, a.k.a. The, uh, the Deer Stones is coming up, but uh, Viper going to be trying his best to just take out a lot of these units. Uh, still, we do not see at this point in time an archery range coming up, and Viper definitely in a difficult spot here. So I definitely I feel like he probably wasn't really prepared for what he was witnessing there against the Mongols. That outpost still actually not going up. That, that worker is just sitting there idle. I'm not sure exactly what's happened there. Village is going to be trying to get up. You can see he's managing to get that outpost up. They do jump inside. Let's see if he focuses down the, the villager. I don't think it's going to have the range. You can see right there, just very unfortunate for Viper, and that means that that outpost is going to get up. Oh, he's able to hit the- he's able to hit the villager! Oh, he can hit the villager! He manages just to get at that tag on the villager right there. The, now, Leenok can come in here and can actually finish up this outpost. Viper instead going to be pulling villagers. Now, keep in mind behind this, Leenok is doing what Leenok loves to do, uh, and, and that is, uh, I mean, I, I was going to say go to the castle age, but I don't know if Leenok loves to do that, really. I'm going to be honest with you guys. Outpost does go up. Viper going to be in a difficult position now. Going to be losing a lot of villagers here if he's not careful. Looks like one villager gets picked off. Second villager going to go down. Let's see. Doesn't look like it's going to be going down, so trading out villagers. Uh, now, keep in mind, I think that villager on the front line did actually go down. Indeed, it did. So he does trade out the villagers. A lot of idle time coming through for Viper, though. And uh, behind this, Viper trying to get up to that castle age, but both of his food resources have been completely locked down by this. And this is an absolutely huge factor uh, for Viper because over on the other side of the map, you know, you've got Lee Nock who is just putting down pastures on his Uvu. Going to be adding in a third pasture here. He is booming his heart out. Double Mangadai going to be coming out as well. This is quite a curious addition uh, that we're going to be seeing here. But uh, it looks like Mongol Khan has got to be a bit careful. Uh, but uh, Outpost now going to probably be having the, uh, the upgrade coming through any second, I suspect. We'll check in. We'll see. It looks like indeed... Uh, it is here. Uh, so he's got the extra range upgrade on that bad boy. At least I suspect he does. Uh, but I don't think there's any way to check it when there's a unit inside. Other than maybe like the attack range. But, you know, you, you can't... It, it can't... It, it's the limitations of the UI. Look, it's 2022. I'm not going to start talking about, uh, you know, the kind of crazy things that you guys are wanting to see. But, you know, seeing it, a unit statistics while there's something garrison inside it. I mean, that, that, that's, it's just not possible in the engine that we've got, unfortunately. But, uh... <laughs> Viper now managing to sort of move out towards the west. He's got 10 villagers out on the berry bushes out here. Now, keep in mind, his other berry bushes out towards the east. Uh, still not really going to be able to access those bad boys. They are behind the wall. Uh, now we've got those Mangadais moving in behind the gold mine uh, and going to be looking to lock down this area. Viper also has the stone gathered up. I really feel like Viper has just been completely shut down in this position. I'm starting to worry about him. He's got the three prelates out. So look, in the event he does get up to the third age, he's going to have plenty of... Uh, actually, he's got a fourth prelate out here. Is that just because he's got no, no food? I'm not sure exactly why, but he's gone for four prelates already. That is massive. Uh, and this is part of the reason why I don't think Arkham Chapel, or, or I think Arkham Chapel is sort of losing value just because of the, the prevalence of the prelate coming out a lot here. But uh, an outpost is going to be going up over on the berries. Uh, obviously, the Mangadai could potentially move around there. And we now see the Khan going to be looking to link up over on that uh, that western flank 
but uh, we'll watch how he plays, can see the scout out here and looking to secure up the relics. Lee Nock doing a very smart move here. So we'll take a look at the relics and see exactly how they're positioned on the minimap. Uh, so you've got one outside Viper's base, one right outside Lee Nock's base, another one outside Lee Nock's base, another one outside Viper's base, and it looks like a fifth one is right outside Lee Nock's base. Indeed, it is a very good spawn here for Lee Nock. Going to be a easily able to deny. And what are these relic spawns? These are very, very, uh, you know, very favored towards one player. Even like this relic here, it's kind of open towards the middle. And even this relic here, like th these two relics for Viper are further away than what Leenok has to contest with his own three relics. It's kind of wild uh, when it comes. It's, it's rare that you do say that. But look at this. The villagers under attack. Just such huge range coming through now for that unit or for that outpost. Just attacking villagers out here literally under this. And as a result, I mean, right now, Viper sitting on 29 villagers. 34 for Leenok. So a big villager difference there between the two players. Leenok still actually yet to come around and poke and prod towards this position. But even if he did, there is the outpost there that'll be able to defend it up but now viper gonna be looking to age up gonna be dropping down the regnitz cathedral no surprises there one of the best landmarks in the game comfortably sitting inside the s plus tier it is just a go-to landmark one that you take 99.999 percent of the time recurring of course uh 11 villages on that one uh over towards the other side of the map we already see lee not gonna be going up with the step redoubt once again another s tier landmark uh, and uh, this one probably taking about 98% of the time. Uh, it is, you do commonly, or not, you do sometimes see the Kurul tie, but it's very rare to see that. It was it was sort of an early stage uh, Mongol meta build, but now you can see that prelate making its way out. Oh my lord, there was, he never walled this up. Look at the prelates even going towards it. He never walled the gap. He had a big gap, a big gaping hole inside of his base, and he just never, ever even noticed it. And I don't think the Mongol player did either. Uh, we did see that the uh, spears were originally heading up in this direction, but I think Lee Nock did pull them back. But now, take a look. Take a look here. Viper going to be trying to pick up that. He doesn't actually know. Viper's got no line of sight out on the map. He's just coming out here willy-nilly. Does actually spot the relic. But uh, he's going to be spotting something else as well. Looks like the prelate going to be unfortunately going down. He's going to try and pick that bad boy up and try and move it. Come on, you can move it at least a little bit. Oh, there you go. You got it. Three pixels. You send out five more prelates. You guys will get it eventually. If he sends out two prelates at the same time, he will be able to capture that. Uh, so let's see if he picks that one up. But uh, he's, he's in a very difficult position. He only knows about the location of two of those prelates. And that really comes down to the aggression of the Mongol player. And and the fact that he was able to keep Viper in his base just by keeping the calm back over here it forced Viper to bring back his scouts and as a result it meant that he wasn't really able to do much. Viper now going to be looking to wall up the uh, the, the the gaping hole uh, that was uh, that is at his entrance. Uh, do we have an outpost in the middle? We do have an outpost in the middle. Also going to be going for a springled emplacement here. Uh, so really looking to secure this one up and, uh, and make sure Viper's not going to be able to take that uh, take that one. At the same time, an outpost going down towards the eastern side. And just look at this total control, total domination when it comes to securing up these bad boys. Absolute insanity right now from Lee Nokia is looking very strong. And just keeping Viper in the basin. Look, honestly, I think this is the perfect way to play Mongols. I genuinely think this is the best way to play Mongols. I don't think you can actually play it any better than what Lee Nock is playing right now. And honestly, uh, it, it impresses me so much that Lee Nock has discovered this or has identified this and he's subsequently abusing it. I, I genuinely think towers right now, they are just incredibly strong. Uh, I, I would almost go to the extent of saying that what we need with towers, there needs to be a technology that enables emplacements to be unlocked. That's what I'm going for. So I reckon make it an age two technology. And the technology is, whether it's available in the blacksmith or something like that, and you would research it, it just, you know, it doesn't have to be expensive. It just has to take time. That's the big thing. Because right now, you've got Mongol players getting up at 5 minutes, 5 minutes 30, dropping down the outpost and immediately getting that upgrade. And it just, for it, there's nothing you can do. There's literally nothing you can do against it. Uh, and, and for all those guys like, oh, just make a battering ram, Drongo, you dickhead. By the time you make a battering ram, your enemy's already age 3 and the game is over because you wasted all your time. Um, so, look, I don't think the Mongol attack is unstoppable. I definitely think outpost in particular probably need a bit of a nerf at least with regard to the emplacement so just make it a blacksmith upgrade make it cost 50 gold 50 wood make it take one minute and 30 seconds and researching that unlocks the ability to put emplacements on your outpost. You can see right now, both of these players have emplacements on their outposts. If we take a look up, up towards this position, so you can see Viper's got arrow slits, he's got spring on emplacement, he's got cannon emplacement. And so my my proposal, and I, I, this, I just thought of this on the fly, you would just have another technology that's right here in the blacksmith, very similar to siege engineering. It'd be called like outpost de or defensive outposts or something like that. And it would enable you to then have those technologies or th those emplacements uh, created. And then, you know, if you didn't have that, even if you're in age four, 
You're not going to be able to have emplacements on your outposts. You're not going to have emplacements on your keeps. Nothing like that. Not until you research that technology. That's what, that's how I think you'd probably do a bit better at balancing these outposts because it does feel like the outposts are incredibly strong. I don't know about you guys, but I've begun to notice a continued trend. Delhi, Chinese, Mongols, all these civilizations are moving more and more towards outpost rushes, outpost attacks, and we are seeing it almost in every single game that these guys are playing. So that's my shout out to you guys, devs. Uh, hopefully, uh, hopefully you're listening. Hopefully you've scheduled the meeting for Monday. But uh, Leenok now going to be pushing out with more and more of these uh, of these units out towards these enemies' base. You can see he's just got an absolutely booming economy sitting here on 48 villages at the moment. At the same time, Viper sitting on 40 villages, no relics whatsoever. So you can see right there, Regnitz Cathedral completely useless at the moment. Uh, a couple of villages out on this front. Now, obviously, that outpost has been sieged down. Uh, so he's now going to have access towards this berry bush uh, or these berry bushes towards this deer carcass. But at the same time, I mean, he is struggling significantly. Multiple uh, relics still out on the map yet to be secured. And now we see the Mongols coming in for their power move, their RKO off the top rope. Going to be looking to uh, put in some of those mangonels from their improved siege engineering. And uh, it is uh, a, a difficult position to stop right now because these units are going to begin flooding in. Uh, I mean, realistically, Viper's got absolutely no ability whatsoever to get out onto the map. You can see now he's actually doing a bit of a scout. Or I, I say a bit of a scout, a bit of a raid is, is probably more realistic. But look at the units now coming out from Lee Nock. Uh, Viper's actually going to sort of catch him somewhat with his pants down. Reinforcements here. These guys aren't going to turn around. Now it looks like they're going to be able to do it. And quite a formidable force there. Probably more than enough to stop the raiding party. And now the Manganel going to begin moving in. Uh, we don't see any We don't see any uh, battering rams just yet at this stage. But uh, the Manganel is going to be more than enough to start the siege work. Uh, but now we hear the uh, relics getting taken. So the shaman going to be out about on the map. Uh, where is that uh, that tent? You guys know the tent that I'm talking about. There it is. It's coming down. The monastery. The moving monastery. Uh, but uh, he comes through now. Going to be picking up uh, some of these raids. You can see you've got the plus one coming through for Viper. But it's just not going to be too much of, a, of an issue when you've got these many spearmen. Now keeping in mind, these guys have got the yam network as well. Because why wouldn't they? 1.44 movement speed on these. So the knights are going to have to really keep it running. Uh, it looks like a second relic going to be kicked up picked up right now for Lenox. So he's grabbed this one over on the left flank. Um, and now it actually looks like the uh, prelate is going to be able to pick up that... Uh, that uh, relic over towards the west of the map. Still got that one available on the east. And Battering Ram now going to begin moving in. But Vi Viper really yet to have any forces at this stage. I think we hear a Springled coming out from somewhere. No, I, I, I heard a Springled emplacement of some sort. Or maybe it was just a Springled of some sort. Indeed, it was two Springleds now coming out. Looking to take down this Battering Ram. You can see just how much damage it does. Uh, but Viper really with a lack of units back here. You can see him now moving across the map with the units that he does have. But going up against the Siege composition, he's going to need he's gonna need to get some form of mangonels for himself because there's so many spears that are in here and he's only got cavalry he's only got springles at this point in time but now looking to trade out you can see those springles going down on the front line uh viper doing a great job of picking those ones off he's probably going to be looking to get a few villagers in there to heal as well now behind this uh keep in mind there is that relic still uh sprinkled emplacement on that outpost and uh and lee Nock now really taking control of this game he falls back for the moment but uh you can just see realistically if we check the scores out how far ahead he is. He's up about 800 points at the moment. And I would 100% say that that is accurate. Completely stopping all of the uh, all of the, the relic collection from his opponent, with the exception of that one out to the west. So if, if your enemy only gets one relic and they're playing Holy Roman Empire, I feel like you probably win. You probably win. And Leelok looking incredibly strong on this game. Now manages to drop down a couple more of the Springles on the front. He's got plenty of resources in the bank. Uh, Going to continue moving around the monastery. I love this. It's such a smart move. The monastery following the shaman around, just heading out towards each of these relics and looking to pick them up over the map. So a very smart move. Now keep in mind the the relics on the on the in the monastery. They are going to be staying nice and safe. Uh, but obviously, if they do get caught when they're out here, then it's a, a big of an a big issue. But obviously, Lee Nock just sitting on such a greater uh, military amount. We actually see a 61 versus 29. So more than double at this point. Lance Connect's going to be coming out for Viper. So he's looking to turn towards the infantry composition here to try and go up against the uh, the Mongol player. The Mangonels on the front line going to begin sieging down that outpost. Outpost does get cancelled. Villager almost dies only because of the, uh, the textiles. Is he able to stay alive? And once again, Viper is on the high ground. He's going to be able to spot out this mangonel and you can see the mangonel probably going to be going down here unless the sprinkle does get the shots off and it looks like oh we've got the, the counter sprinkles coming out now and this is part of the issue beautiful uh beautiful amount of uh, units in here for lee knock he's got a great defensive hold it looks like we're going to be entering into the battle ladies and gentlemen as we begin watching the the play unfold 
and you can just see how much damage is now coming in onto these cavalry units, just barely able to even take down the Mangadels, all of them dead completely. And Ice is back, Viper probably going to tap out after that. I think that was his final push, and he just barely even able to make a dent at that in that situation. So... I, I'm suspecting good game is going to get called any second. And there it is, ladies and gentlemen. Good game does indeed get called. Lenok victorious and looking incredibly strong as we head into N4C. I know a lot of guys have counted him out, but I tell you what, he's 100% my favorite to go on and win the tournament. Uh, make sure you go check out N4C, fellas. I'll leave a link in the description to where you can find out more information and when you can, where you can watch the stream live. I'll catch you guys in the next one.